Hunter Hunter episode 140. Now, I have read this election arc in the manga, but that was years ago while the chapters were coming out and I don't really remember specifics of what happened. But this scene when Leorio punches Jing is my favorite part in the entire arc. I have been waiting for this for so long and it's satisfied. In the manga, I'm not sure if they made it clear if Jing saw that punch coming because I think he just punched him, but in this episode, I think he definitely noticed that the punch was coming and he just let it happen. It was so funny just seeing him just unconscious. Yeah, he's quite the character. And afterwards when he punched him, when that Zodiac Bunny Girl said that you'll find today's footage on the Hunter's website, you can like rewatch the punch over and over again. It was pretty hilarious because I actually did watch the punch over and over again. That was my favorite part. And then the entire audience started cheering, which clarifies that I don't think anyone actually likes Jing. Which brings me to my impressions of Jing. So I started watching Hunter x Hunter probably about 10 years ago during the original series and then I also read the manga as well. So I was pretty young when I started watching. and. Jing to me was just so mysterious and he did all these amazing things and I just looked up to him and, and then once he finally appeared a couple episodes ago and then also when I read it in the manga, he showed up just looking all raggedy and just grimy with just unshaven and apparently no one likes him. Now that I'm older and I understand it a bit better, he's kind of an asshole. I mean, he did abandon his infant son to go live out his life and dreams and do fun stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love Jing, but he is what he is. I'm totally with Leorio getting angry over him. But Jing said, Gon has enough friends like you and that would suffice. Another jerk move. But then again, thinking about it more, I feel like he planned all of this to happen. You know what I mean? Just like when he planned out the rules and for that all to happen. How he predicted that would all happen. Or maybe he predicted Lurero would get upset and he would punch him or something. Because he definitely saw that punch coming, right? I mean, it looked pretty easy to dodge. And I wonder if he actually planned out all of Gon's life for him. So when he left him as a child and then eventually left him that tape and the ring for Greed Island, he assumed that Gon would eventually become a hunter just like him and want to find him. So I wonder if Jing wanted to give him this life of becoming a hunter? And that was his plan from the beginning. So then again, it's not that bad he abandoned him, right? I guess. Did anyone else get squeamish when, I think her name is Subone, she peeled off her fingernail? Ugh. And when Aluka goes, give me the nail of your pinky? She is so terrifying most terrifying character in Hunter x Hunter, at least for me. I've been terrified of her for a long time. Overall, amazing episode, as always. I cannot wait for next week. I love Tuesdays. Tuesdays are my favorite now because I just watch Hunter x Hunter all day. Also, Karepika appears. But basically, that's all that really mattered to me in this episode. I don't really make reviews of animes. This is my first time doing so. <laughs> I do some other stuff, but... Hopefully I can maybe do more of other random things. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you later. Bye.